Hey and welcome to Never Winter with Aragon. In this video I'd like to show you how you can obtain your two free artifacts in Neverwinter. Artifacts can be the key thing to obtain maximum damage on your character and also they have a whole variety of other different buffs from survivability to healing etc. So while leveling your character there are basically two opportunities to be able to obtain your free artifacts. Initially on level 20 you can head over to Sergeant Knox just here in Protector's Enclave and if you speak with him he'll give you a quest here called Artifact Facts. And this quest will essentially send you over to the Sage Shop where you can go ahead and follow that quest line to obtain one of your free three artifacts. Now I'm going to do that later on in the video. Initially now I'm going to show you how you can obtain your class sigil. Your class sigils are here in the collections tab. We head over in the artifact section all the way at the back here we have our class sigils. Now, I'll admit, not many of them are overly helpful. However, there are especially a few here which are very useful. From like the Sigil of the Paladin, to the Sigil of the Fighter, and even the Sigil of the Cleric. Now, currently I'm on a wizard, and I do not have the Sigil of the Wizard unlocked. Now, albeit this Sigil is not very good, as all it will do will give you a few more stats, and also... If you use it as your active artifact, you'll be able to cast it to deal a little bit more damage. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can obtain these specific class sigils. Well now, first things first, you're going to have to get your character to level 60. Then you can head through the Seven Suns Coster Market. And just out the back here, you have an NPC near some draft horses and wagons. And you speak to this NPC here, Jarlaxle. And he will give you the quest Artifact of Legend. And you basically accept that from him. And that will tell you to go over to speak with Lord Never Ember. So you just head all the way back up again. So here we are, Lord Never Ember. We speak with him and we'll complete that quest. And he'll give us a new one, the Vault of the Nine. Here we're going to head to a pretty old location known as also Castle Never. So heading over to the Vault of the Nine you can simply go ahead and use your teleport and you can get over to this Sleeping Dragon Bridge. You teleport there and if ever you guys have run Castle Never before you'll recognize this area and also from the very beginning of the tutorial to the game however it'll be a whole lot more darker and the bridge will be burning in places and whatnot anyway we're proceeding down this way now unlike castle never this place is all blocked off and we're heading down this way we speak to this scout and he tells us some information we can collect some secret codes from npcs and we have these spiders and drow who are going to ambush us we just use our powers and we can get rid of those. This character is very subpar. I've only just recently got to level 60. So it's more give that experience of an actual newer player getting to this. And trying to get that class sigil. So you just have to beat up these NPCs. Obtaining these codes from these tables just here. You read the codes. And then you proceed onwards. And you'll just have to beat up a whole amount of these drow and some spiders and whatnot. It isn't too difficult. You can see my character stats here are pretty abysmal. We're doing just fine. Just dodge out of most of the damage and continue on. We get to the next table here where we can grab the next piece of code. However, you still need to beat up the NPCs here first or the monsters. Ouch, that spider hurts a lot. Let's uh, use our daily power on her. And uh, she's gone. Out of here. And let's not die to these puny spiders. There we go. We finished off the NPCs and we can get our second snippet of code. And now we can enter the Vault of the Nine. We do some finagling with this uh, stone and the runes. And we unlock the Vault. Statue of the Lion rises up and we can enter this doorway. And we enter this mini dungeon here. And this place is actually pretty cool. However, it is populated by a lot of undead. But me and my little panther companion won't have too much problem here. Beat up the last of the skeletons in the tunnel. 
we open up here and we encounter some more lizard folk. These times, these guys you want to be a bit more wary of. Don't get caught in their nets and then pound it on. You can always wait till a later date to get your class sigil, but if you want to do it as soon as you've hit level 60, you're going to basically have the same difficulty as I've, I have right here. It's uh, not too challenging, but you're just going to have to do a bit of dodging and weaving. Avoid as much damage as possible and you'll be perfectly fine against those mobs. Entering this nice cavern here, across this rickety old wooden bridge. Enter the cave and we just have to beat up some more lizard folk. Nothing too hard about this at all. You can of course go ahead and do this with a party. It'll be a lot easier. If you have a bunch of friends and you all got to level 60 and you all want to unlock your class sigils, you can basically just all have the quest and you can complete this together. It'll be go much smoother and faster and you'll have it done in no time at all. Just beating up the mobs and continuing along. There's no puzzles or tricks or anything. Initially you gotta find those snippets of code, beating up the mobs, getting at those tables. And we'll finally come to the boss room here, where we're gonna have to go ahead and fight an undead beholder. Before we go in, you can see this character is very subpar. I literally just have the highest item level gear pieces that I have found along the way. My powers, I haven't even really set them up. I've just gone through them, specifically chose the ones for AoE mainly, because that's the most of the things you do beating up mobs in large areas. I haven't even chosen my feats yet, something I like to go over a bit later. Companion tab, see, I don't even have all rank 8 bondings yet. Got some companion equipment, and my mounts, I barely have any insignias at all, just have two gladiators go off the movement speed. So we enter in, and let's go ahead and beat up this beholder. Uh, let's make sure to dodge most of his attacks here, but we should be okay here. Using that power, didn't really time it very well, but sure. Currently I just have my AoE powers, so I don't expect it to do too much damage, but this should finish him my daily. And that's it, my ice knife, and he's out of here. And we got a nice shard of empowerment. Nice epic one there as a reward. Of course their price is getting a whole lot cheaper. And here we go. We have our large big chest, which we can open the sarcophagus to obtain our locked artifact coffer. And now we just have to head back to Protector's Enclave. Got some weird uh, glitching here, but sure. And we just have to head back up to Lord Never Ember, giving him the coffer. And here we are. We speak back to him, claim that quest, finish it. And he gives us a reward of our sigil of the wizard. And here we have it. We can just go ahead and slot it in one of our secondaries or we can even put it in our primary. And if we go ahead and we cast this artifact, let's just do it over here, you can see what it looks like. You'll basically just pulse out that uh, magic and that will be the artifact. It's nothing special at all really. And yes, if you go ahead and you complete that quest, you'll be able to claim all the other artifacts on your character. For example here, I haven't done the Citadel of the Nine quest on a Warlock or a Barbarian yet, so I can't claim those, and I've just claimed my Citadel of the Wizard, and you can see I pretty much have all the other ones unlocked. And you can see I can gain the Citadel of the Baladin on my Wizard, I can slot it here, or I could even use it as healing by slotting it in the primary. All right, so for our second quest, we have the Artifacts Facts quest, where we have to go to the Sage's shop. Now this quest, as I said before, you can obtain when you're on level 20, just from Sergeant Knox. You head over directly to this Sage's shop, you enter in, and you'll have to go ahead to speak to this elder right here. Accept that one and he gives you the quest here where you'll be able to obtain one of these artifacts. Looking at the quest within our quest journal here, you can see we'll be able to obtain one of these three artifacts. Now looking in our collections tab again, we'll be able to basically obtain one of these quagmire artifacts. The Waters of Elisad, the Lantern of Revelation or the Aurora's Whole Realms Catalog. Now, if we look at the Lantern of Revelation, you can see there it's very good for buffing party's damage because 
you'll basically increase the amount of damage enemies take by 10% for 10 seconds. This is one of the artifacts that is used currently within Endgame in a trial scenario against bosses. The other two artifacts are not particularly useful. The Waters of Elisad will help you to give you a decent amount of a heal and it will also be able to cleanse you of such negative conditions and the Aurora's Whole Realms catalog will give you the ability to summon a shopkeeper which is pretty decent. So we go ahead and we head over to the Black Dagger Ruins and we're gonna head over to the Cragmire Barrow. Arriving at the Cragmire Barrow we just enter in and we just have to beat up a whole bunch of skeletons. We actually have a character here already, perhaps we can team up with him. We invite him to the party and maybe he wants to join us on our quest. And it looks like we have a friend to join us. And you simply just have to travel along. You have to interact with these skulls, which will create these foggy bridges across. And you'll see another platform materializing on the opposite side. And that fog bridge appears, which you can simply go ahead and walk across. You come to this portal and it teleports you into the center of the platform. Here you'll basically just have to fight a whole bunch of monsters. And this is also how you make friends with the Neverwinter. Literally just run into them, you ask them if they want to join them on the quest that you're on. Interacting with the next skull, see the next platform on the opposite side appearing. And we can go ahead and traverse across. Getting teleported into the center here. Oh, so now we have a bunch of these monsters. They don't seem to be much trouble at all. And here we come to our next skull, interact with it, and we travel across to the next platform. And here we have some more NPCs, some devils, and that's pretty much them dealt with there. On with the next skull, travel across the next bridge, through the portal, and we have some magma golem. Let's not get wrecked by him. And that's them dealt with fairly easily and I guess we proceed on again you can see this guy is level 21 and he has received this quest so yeah you have to be level 20 to be able to obtain this quest to proceed on and be able to obtain that artifact here we have this NPC this lich now we're either gonna fight him if we get the wrong answer we'll see how he does he's gonna talk to him and we'll see do we have to fight him or not Looks like we'll have to fight this golem as he got the question wrong. No matter, shouldn't be too much trouble. No, not at all. And uh, he's gone. And there we go. And we proceed on to our final platform. And we have our final bridge to cross. And materializing before us is the sealed sarcophagus. Open it and it gives us the sealed coffer. And there we go, we just have to head back to Protector's Enclave. Returning back to the Sage's shop. Here we are, and speak back to the NPC. And we claim that quest. And then we're done with him, and we get this chest where we have to choose one of the following. I'm gonna choose the Lantern of Revelation because it's one of the best for end game. However, you could definitely choose one of the others if you don't feel you're going to get to end game in any hurry or you just have no rush and you like the versatility, the utility of these other artifacts. I'm going to go ahead and claim that and we have our lantern which you can go ahead and slot just here. You won't be able to sell this artifact as it will be character bound. And that's it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful and I presented this well. If I did, consider leaving the video a like and if you're new around here, consider subscribing. And we'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.